break over Christmas was really nice and it was like a real refreshment, a real, of course physical because my body gets a chance to heal my injuries throughout the year. But mentally, like sometimes you take a little bit of a break from sparring, you come back and you're like, got this whole new, fresh way of thinking and you're having fun when you're sparring, you're training and it's putting different things together. Whereas sometimes in your fight camp and fight camp and fight camp, like you're just focusing on the most efficient things, you're focusing your game. You, you forget the playfulness sometimes, but it's been nice. Like I'm seriously developing a game at the minute. I didn't stop over Christmas, like the intensity dropped, but I still kept with the technique as always. And I feel like I'm adding a lot of new things to my arsenal at the minute. And it's, it's actually very exciting. And it's really, it's really making the training really enjoyable for me now. Like you can't love every single session. Like it's just impossible when you're doing it twice a day. Like if you're going tippy tappy stuff, yes. But when you're really, really forcing yourself to improve and to work hard, like it, it is, it's a grind. Like, and, and since, since the fourth, since Monday the 4th of January, it's been full tilt, full training camp, two sessions a day. Like, since the last fight, maybe for five minutes after they made the decision, uh, the, the, the judges' decision, I was disappointed. But after that, as soon as I got to watch the fight back, I wasn't disappointed because in my mind, like, I know I won that fight. And that's not like a disrespect. Like that's just my opinion. That's how I scored it. How, of course, all my team have scored it. <laughs> no bias. But uh, I haven't seen it as a setback at all. Every fight you learn so much, and I'm starting to really appreciate that. I appreciate that as I move on in my career. Is how valuable experience is, because of as I say, the amount that you learn each fight, each preparation, each build up, each actual fight how you react to certain situations in a fight, because you can tell a lot from the fight, because ultimately you're just doing what's coming natural to you in a fight. Especially last round, you're tired. You're just doing what's coming natural to you. So that's why these repetitions are just so important in training. And that's why training is so daunting at times, because it's just reps and reps and reps for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're going from one fight to the other fight. But that's why I say about motivation, like it's a funny, it's a funny sort of word to me, because I don't know if I'm more motivated after that last loss because to me it is just all discipline and my discipline is just there always. So it is what it is. Like I've been back since, I haven't stopped since that last fight, I was back to training the next week. Since the first week of the year, it's been fight camp. And I'm already three weeks into that. I feel, I feel incredible already. Everyone's positive. It's, it's live and learn, like everyone is positive from that last fight. I know so many things I need to improve. Composure, I've been impressed with my composure. And um, one thing about the last fight, was the pace i was it was great to get like such a high pace fight because i know deep down and, and i knew this anyway from other fights that when the going gets tough i get going like and i, I think it was pretty evident in the last round both guys were just scrambled i feel like i was 100 percent pushing the pace towards the end of that third round with the scrambles and with for example the last 15 seconds i could have just held on and tried to hold my way to victory land a few strikes but i went break off and i just went I just emptied the tank for 15 seconds and I guess that's that's like a positive knowing that I'm willing to just empty the tank every time so that's why I'm here doing the technical work and as always just trying to focus on what I control there of course every fight you learn what aspects you want to improve for example sometimes there was a couple of times where he was able to get back to his feet when I had him down now if I had solidified them positions it was every round like not even a question was to me now, that's easier said than done. Like, a fight pace is a fight pace. It's scrambly, it's both guys are fighting hard. But it, it, as I say, it just gives you that extra sort of push to refine these techniques. And that comes with fighting, and it comes with experience, as I say. It's, it's just putting yourself in them high pressure posi positions and seeing what's working, what's not working. And that's why I say experience is so valuable. I've watched it back a million times, and I, there's, like, I'm my hardest, I'm my worst critic. So there's so much stuff that I look at, and I. To be honest, I couldn't even watch the fight for a couple of weeks after. Uh, apart from initially straight after the fight, I watched it and I thought I, I won that. I didn't watch it for a couple of weeks then because I just, at the time I wasn't really happy with my performance because I lost and there was a lot of things I could have done better. But the more I watch it back, the more I'm sort of happy with it. But that doesn't mean to say I, I'm not working as hard because as I say, that sort of, that sparks there. And I know what I'm capable of and I know that what I showed in that cage was not my true potential. I'm just fucking excited to get back in there. I'm coming in with Avengers like in seven weeks.
if I was speaking to my, am my amateur self and my younger self, uh, I think what I would say would be having now been around the world and trained in some, some of the world class, some of the best gyms in the world, trained with multiple UFC guys, trained with UFC champions. Paul now would say to amateur Paul, to 18 year old Paul, to just turned pro 19 year old Paul that these guys are not one bit different, not one bit different in any way than you. And having seen that firsthand as myself now, now I fully understand and can grasp that. And that's like a, that's been a very important thing for me actually is being able to see what the best in the world are doing and realizing that they are literally the exact same as me. Like just normal people who are just double down, triple down, quadruple down on what they're good at and what they love from what drives them, which is obviously MMA. And there is no secret formula. It's pretty simple. Like there really isn't a secret formula to MMA. Yes, your training hours have to be pur purposeful and you have to be efficient with what you're doing and you need to be pushed and be training with better guys and having and have amazing coaches which i do have ultimately there's no secret formula it's just the guy that's willing to put in more purposeful hours into training it's it really is that simple and it's I, i'm like younger paul maybe would have overcomplicated it and i think anybody coming up sort of thinks it, it's natural to put people on pedestals and it's natural to put world champions in pedestals. It's natural to put guys who run, guys or girls that run incredibly successful businesses on pedestals as if they're this special person. But when you realize that these people are just the exact same as you and they've just doubled down on what they love and they're not even focusing on what they're shit at. They're just focusing on what they can control and what they're good at. I think that would be the number one thing I would say to Amateur Paul. And I think I'm sort of embodying that now, having been away and having traveled and realizing that it's just hard work. It's just discipline. It's just, there really is no substitute for hard work. There, and it's a common phrase, but there really is no substitute for hard work in this game. And I'm willing to put in that hard work. I'm willing to put in that hard work for 15 more years if I have to, you know what I mean? To, to be the best in the world. And I, I fully understand now that this game is a marathon and not a sprint as well. And the importance of experience and pushing the comfort zone. It's a standard procedure here, it's two or three times a week on the treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour. Green zone. It's pretty easy, like, keeping the heart rate at about maybe 150 beats per minute. Just in that green zone, so just before I hit lactate. So it's not, not like an unbelievably fatiguing exercise. It's just low intensity, stay, stay on it for about an hour and just study fights. This is, this is, I was gonna say this is what they don't see, but quite obviously they're gonna see it now. But this is just standard procedure, like getting the green zone and working, but making my time valuable and studying fights. Usually I have my, my sparring rounds videoed. Today I was sparring more in the open and was a wee bit more playful. So I didn't video my rounds. So I'm just gonna study some other fights. Kamara Usman, he's fighting next week against Gilbert Burns. So I actually watched all of Gilbert's Gilbert Burns' entire UFC career this week, running. <laughs> and now I'm starting on Usman. But I've actually started on Usman versus Covington just because it's an absolute scrap. And it'll just make the time go a wee bit faster as well. At the end of the day, people, people will use any excuse. They'll use any excuse not to train. If they're fucking, a couple of training partners can't make it or coach can't make it at night, they'll go, I oh, will just leave it. But that's not how you become the best in the world. You know what I mean? Becoming the best in the world is coming in here at 11 a.m. and sparring for an hour and a half, two hours, and then getting in the treadmill. It's fucking, what time is it? Half one. It's like, this is Sunday service. Sunday's being served today, like every Sunday. It's just no substitute for hard work. And this game's all hard work. And that's what I'm willing to do to get that world title. And that's what I'm going to get this year. And that's just that. It is not the violence that sets men apart. It is the distance that he is prepared to go 